There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. So the Father who waits over the way to prepare a dwelling place there. And sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this glorious day you give us again to glorify you. And thank you for allowing each and every one of us, Lord, to be in your presence, not just some of the time, but all the time, Lord. You invite us in, no matter who we are, or even what we have done. You invite us into the fold to talk to you and understand you and know that every word that comes out of your mouth is truth. And Lord, I pray that, especially me, Lord, can I don't scramble it into things that will suit me and the things that I want to do instead of listening to you and doing what you want to be done. And Lord, I thank you for this day again. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, if I can find the right end of my Bible, comes out of Judges. We're going to start the Judges this morning. Hang on just a minute. God, I didn't mark the place, but God led me to it anyway. Amen. Judges chapter 10, verse 13. Yet you have forsaken me and served other gods, wherefore I will deliver you no more. Go and cry to the gods which you have chosen, and let them deliver you in time of your... Let them deliver you in time of your tribulation. And the children of God, the children of Israel, said unto the Lord, We have sinned. Do thou un unto us whatever seemeth good unto thee. Deliver, deliver us only, we pray thee, this day. And they put away the strange gods from among them and served the Lord, and his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. Now let's go back to this verse right here. Verse 13. Yet you have forsaken me and serve other gods. Wherefore, I will deliver you no more. What if one morning we woke up and God told you that? God spoke verbally to you. I'm not going to help you no more. I'm not going to deliver you no more. I'm not going to do anything for you that is good. I'm going to stand back. Let the devil have his way. Just like I did old Joe. What if God told us that each and every day? No more am I going to help you. No more am I going to drag you out of the ditch. No more. I'm through with you. People, each and every time we turn our face away from God and go to other things and other gods in our life, what does he do? He grieves for you and I. And he wants so desperately for you to turn your face back unto him. Turn my face unto him instead of looking at other things that I need to do throughout this whole Bible. It says in here, trying to do what man cannot do. Man can only do things through the Holy Spirit that is good. I can pick this Bible up right here and go through the whole book, trying to do each and everything in this book, and I'll wind up serving other gods before it's over. Because I'm not dependent on the Holy Spirit to deliver me from what I need to be delivered from. But God says each and every time, when you go back to him, he's going to be there. So every morning when I wake up, I don't have to worry about, it. well, I'm turning my face away from God this morning. I'm thinking about other things. 
I'm still in the Spirit. And I'm still believing. And I'm still knowing that He is there, even though my mind wanders at times. Just like these people here. But they were so deep in sin, they were so deep in, in their own beliefs and their own things that they wanted more of until they turned their face completely away from God and was following other things and never give God a second thought. So many of us drift away from God, but He's always saying, Come back. Come back to me. Don't follow things of this world. Don't follow things that did, that preacher said Sunday. I've always preached. If the, if the preacher don't say it out of this book, don't follow it. Well, I'm telling you here this morning, if the preacher don't preach through the Holy Spirit, don't follow it. Because we can read this book till the cows come home and become so confused until we don't even have a clue of what's going on at times because we're not consulting the Holy Spirit to examine this for us and deliver us in this, explaining each and every word that it says. Come on now. I can read this verse. I can pick through here, open this verse up, and I can get a different meaning than you do out of it each and every time. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is delivering the message to you, through you. If you speak it, what I preach this morning may be different than that preacher up on Main Street. Main Street is preaching even though we're preaching out of the same verse. On the same verse. In this Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit. And if it's good, if it's, if it's nurturing to people, if it's giving them what they need to follow the Holy Spirit, honoring God all the way, it's got to be good. And we got to be doing something right. Not leading people astray. Not telling people what they have to do and how they have not to do. Lord have mercy. I can't get it out of my mouth fast enough what God's telling me here this morning. He's telling us to follow Him. Trust the Holy Spirit. Read the book. Understand the book through the Holy Spirit. Give me the words or the word in this book to follow this morning. Instead of picking and choosing what I want to believe, picking and choosing and saying some of this book is not right, oh, some of this book is, is contradicting itself, let me consult the Holy Spirit, let the Holy Spirit tell me what is truth, not my flesh. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fired up this morning. I'm fired up because I am sick and tired of people telling me how to live my life and how not to live my life. As well as you. I know you in the same boat. You feel like, I need to do this. God is telling me to do this. And then somebody comes along and tells you, man, you done lost your mind. And then my mind starts drifting about what this person said over here instead of relying back to God, just like these people did. Went to consulting other gods instead of worshiping the one and only true God. Praise God. Woo! I can't... I'm trying to settle down this morning, but I can't do it. I can't do it. Because I can feel the Holy Spirit. I can, he's running through my veins this morning, and I can feel it, and I know it. Pray that every word comes out of my mouth is truth. And all I have to do is consult the Holy Spirit and let Him, let Him, let Him, let it deliver the words that needs to come out of this old mouth this morning. That's what I need to do. Preaching out of the Word of God. Stand, Lord have mercy, years ago, I remember standing up in front of this church. My first preaching ceremony. Oh, I was just so happy. I was just so go lucky. Until I got up in that pulpit. I looked at all the people around me. And I started thinking. And my mind went to wondering. And God was gone. Out of my mind. He was still there, but he was gone out of the old Arvin's mind. And I started thinking, am I going to offend that person right over there when I say something? Am I going to lift this person up over here when I say something? Is my sermon going to be good enough? 
a partner. I had everything I was about to say wrote down in a book, in, in a you know notebook. Everything I said in that pulpit, I read. But I tried to put a little drama, dramatization onto it, so the people would admire Arvin. Arvin done so good on his first sermon. Turning to other gods. You know, we can even make gods out of people. That's what's so killing. We can lift people up and honor and glorify them. For what? Gratification. Go right back to man and his gratification. Come on then. I mean, in this book here, it says over and over and over and over. Over here in a Timothy. I got to read the Timothy this morning. God led me over there. And it's just full of things that we have to do, Timothy says. It's just packed full of things in that church that he wants the people to do. And he wrote a letter to them. He, he told them how to cow eat the cabins, what they need to do in that church to straighten it up and straighten it out. What if I opened this book up this morning and started preaching about everything Timothy said? Come on now. Read First Timothy this morning. Just read through it if you have time sometime today. And just think about, Lord have mercy, if that preacher would have got up this morning and come to that camera and preached what Timothy said, would I still listen to that preacher? I mean, there's some stuff in here now you got to live by in order to go to Timothy's church. And that's a whole other sermon. But I want to tell you a little tidbit. I bailed out of a church because of that. They went to telling me what the church wanted instead of what God wanted. They want to tell me what the church wants instead of what I need to preach through the Holy Spirit. Now you can't say this, but you can say this. We're going to give you a pamphlet. We're going to give you a line of guidelines like Timothy did, and you've got to follow each and every one of them. Well, I'm here to tell you, Timothy had some thoughts. And it was fired by the word of the living God. But as I stand before you this morning, I'm not Timothy, I'm Arvin. God led Timothy, God's leading me. It's a whole different avenue here. God's leading you in a different direction than he's leading me. But it, as the wife said this morning, everybody always comes back to the core, which is him. Which is him. And it says so many times, <clears throat> don't follow man, follow God. Don't follow... <clears throat> If I follow every word in this book, it is inspired by God. Don't get me wrong. I'm not putting the book down this morning. What I am doing is lifting the Holy Spirit up. I'm not putting the book down. If it's inspired, it's inspired by God. I know that. Every word that come out of Timothy's mouth was God sent because it's in this book. It's got to be truth. Understand that. But how can we live by everything Timothy said? How can we do that? We'll be so jambled up, mined up, bolted up, don't know, clammed up, whatever the word you want to use, till we don't have no place for God in our life. Because we're steady trying to live up by what Timothy wants us to do. And how to do it. Same way at the church house. Same way at the preacher. Lord, I gotta rush, I gotta hurry, I gotta get there, I gotta go, I gotta be, I gotta sit down, I gotta do the whole nine yards, and I gotta do the ritual, I gotta do everything perfectly because the preacher expects it out of me. Whew. If we only done God that way, wouldn't this be a great world? If we only put God first in our lives each and every day, wouldn't this be a great world? Instead of following man or a woman. But I want you to sit down. I, 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 I'm asking you this morning. 
Sit down and read Timothy this morning. If you have time in this fast-paced world, if you don't read all of it, just read parts of it. Start in chapter 3 there. That'll blow your mind if you had never read it before. Because it blew mine. And I'm thinking, how in the world did God inspire this man to say all this? How did God expect us to live by what this man is saying? And it all come back to me and rushed in like a rushing river and said, you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. All things. Praise God. Woo, let me just pick one or two out here right quick. If I can get my bearings straight. Woo, praise God. It, 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 it's, let the deacons be husband of one wife, ruling children, their own houses as well. Uh, and let these also first be proved. Let us... Let them use the office of a deacon be found blameless. A deacon has got to be found blameless in order to be a deacon of the church. I want to ask you this morning, how many deacons are blameless this morning? How many preachers are blameless? How many Sunday school teachers are blameless? How many leaders in the church or around the church or not even in the church are blameless? My Bible says not one. Not one is righteous in the flesh. Because there's two spirits, people. It's the fleshly spirit and the Holy Spirit. And they steady fight. They steady at war all the time. One's trying to overdo the other. One's trying to make the other one flee, in other words. So how can I, being caught in the middle, call myself blameless? There's no way. There's no way. What Timothy is saying here, Use the office of a deacon being found in the Holy Spirit. That's the key that unlocks the door. And he will become blameless, righteous, all of the above that God so desires out of that man. Or, amen. Through the Holy Spirit. That's the avenue that we need to take each and every day. He starts out in chapter 4, and I'm talking about bears down. Now the Spirit speaketh expressively that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. What faith? Is he talking about the faith in the church? Faith in people? Faith in God through the Holy Spirit? What faith is he talking about here this morning? giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of the devils. That's what happens when we get away from the faith of the living God. If we start speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meats. It is just so chock full of things that we are expected to do in this life through the religious aspect of man. We are so lawed up until binded up until we can't even move sometimes trying to figure out what I need to do next. And what am I going to do next? What do I got to do next? People, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, and I got to say this. I can't say it. I can't keep it in no more. I got to say this. But when people telling you, people dreaming up the things and saying, this is coming from the living God, I'm, what I'm about to tell you, you got to go home and live by your bed 35 minutes to pray. Well, I hear 
to tell you, I don't speak to him 35 minutes. I speak to him all day. Praise God. And the more I speak to him, the more I learn. Not just set aside a time period. Well, that to get people on their knees. that to get people on their talking to God. And once they start talking to him, they want to get talked to him. No. You can't push somebody into doing something. You can't say and set a lot of time for somebody to do something. Because when you start pushing, they, they start shoving. Come on now. I'm not saying don't get by your bed and pray. I'm not saying kneel down to him. I'm not saying don't do all those things. What I'm telling you here this morning, let it become repetitious, not through man, not through you, not through the flesh, but through the Holy Spirit. Let him deliver you. Let him what tell him, you what times to talk to God. And I'm here to tell you this morning, he's going to tell you, talk to God all the time. Not just when it's convenient for you. Or not when you're asking for something. And not when you're doing it because the preacher said so. Or not doing it because it's an obligation. But doing it because... You want to glorify God. Because I want to tell you what, throughout the day, when I'm trying to trying to talk to him, I'm steady think they were steady pounding on my head and telling me other things to think about. And Lord, I've tried it. I can't help it. I'm flesh. And I go in there and kneel down that bed to buy that bed and say, I'm going to pray for 35 minutes. I might pray for 15. I might pray for 5. I might pray for 2. But I'm going to be thinking about other things. Kneel down beside that bed. Come on now. Because when we try to do something, there's going to be a brick wall. But when we do something, when the Holy Spirit tells us to do something, and we're doing it for God's honor through the Holy Spirit, we're going to be able to do it. My mama used to say, I walked the floors all night, son, praying for you. And that lifted me up so much by her saying that. And I pray that she was telling me the truth. And I pray that she did. And evidently she did because I'm standing up here before you preaching out of the Word of God. Amen? Prayers work, people. Talking to God works. But the number one thing we need to fall back on is the relationship you have with Him and not the relationship we have to move with material things. Oh, I know some of y'all are going to cut the TV off, I mean the, the, the video off now because I'm putting the Holy Spirit before this book. This will burn. My Holy Spirit won't. The words in this Bible, I forget. But the Holy Spirit makes me remember. I can read and I can read and I can read. If I'm not thinking about what I'm reading, if I'm not pondering it, if I'm not talking about it, if I'm not engulfed in it, I might as well be reading children's book. I might as well be reading any book. Inspired by the Holy Spirit. I'm, on, I'm here to tell you, when God stops, yeah, I know so this is going to trip some more people, but I can't hit He's telling me to say it. I got to say it. When you open this book and you start reading, when I start reading and your mind starts to wonder and your mind goes over yonder somewhere, I believe God's saying, close that up and consult me. Close the book and consult me. Then go back to the book and your mind will be open again to read the book. Don't make yourself do anything thing without God giving you the strength to do it. It's that simple, people. It's that simple. That's the reason we can't do what Timothy said. We can't do the things that Timothy said to do in that church at that time. We can't do it at that. We can't. If we do, it's all going to be fake. It's all going to be put on a show for other people if we do. 
if it's not inspired by God, why even do it? If God's not telling us to do it, why even do it? Because if you do, you're walking out on a limb and inspiring yourself instead of God. And my God's a jealous God. Amen. But we still have to fall back and understand the fleshly spirit and the spiritual spirit. Amen. And you can read, I'm going to read this verse to you here. Well, i got to do that too. God's telling me to do it. i got to do it. Timothy, first, first Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. And Adam was formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So does that put Adam slam out of the picture? No, he's still sinning. He's still sinning. But he did what the woman told him to do. He didn't have the strength to tell her no. And you know, before God made Eve, Adam was the ruler. Ah, good. Adam ruled the Garden of Eden through the Holy Spirit. And everything was good. Wouldn't it be amazing this morning if every husband in this nation had stood up and ruled through the Holy Spirit? Not through their self. Not with their chest poked out saying, I'm going to do it. I'm going to change my household. I'm going to change my wife. I'm going to change everything to my good. Let us step back and say, I'm going to be a godly husband. I'm going to be somebody that, that my wife can look up to. Now, day and time, we don't have no... It's getting less and few and few and few. And I hear these old men sitting around talking about these women are taking over this nation. Well, why? Because there's no men to stand up on their own two feet and say, No, I'm following my almighty God. No. I'm going to be led by him. No, this house is going to be a home for God to come in any time and say, I like what's going on here. Boy, this is a fine house right here. And y'all are only doing what I told you to do. Way over 2,000 years ago. But somehow we leave this, this verse out. We don't want to preach about that. We don't want to talk about Oh, no. I'll preach about this over here. Love, peace, hope. I'm going to preach about it. But I ain't going to. No, I can't preach that. That might step on some people's toes. But what did Timothy do? How can we read this Bible and not get offended sometimes? How can the flesh stand up and say, I believe every word in this book. Man, I, I bet you every... Ooh, it's a preacher this morning standing up and slanging this book around and saying, Woo! Every word is truth. I stand behind every word in this book. Come on now. How can you do that and keep the people happy? How can you do that without making some people mad? How can you do that without some people getting up and walking out of the church? How can you do that? What we're going to do, send a letter, write a letter, send it, email or something to somebody like Timothy D. And then we're going to walk in the church and it's going to be empty. We can't cop out people. we got to preach. we got to tell other people what's in this book. And we got to tell other people why. God inspired it, Timothy to write it in this book. And the only way we can decipher that is through the Holy Spirit. I sit there in this chair and I asked my wife a question this morning about, about, about that very thing. And I was just amazed how I, 
I sat there and I just listened and I couldn't believe what was coming out of her mouth and I knew it was all truth and I knew the Holy Spirit was talking to her to me, to telling me, what, oh God, I get just so lost for words, I can't spit them out, amen? You don't know how that feels when somebody is full of the Holy Spirit telling you, preaching to you, talking to you and telling you how the cow ate the cabbage and it is truth. I'm thinking, my God, Woo! It is so real. It is so real. Lift God up this morning. Let Him understand that you are what you say you are. Amen. Now, I'm going to leave you this with this right here this morning. It's not what we do. It's what He does through us. It's not what we do, but it's what He does through you and I for Him to get the gratification. Amen. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Starting at verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, What is written in the law? Read. Read it. And he answering said, The lawyer said, and he answered Jesus Christ, and he said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy, thy, and thou neighbor as myself. And Jesus said unto him, You've answered right. This do, and thou shalt live. You mean all, <laughs> all this I tried to do, boil down to the meat, to the to the to the the goodness. It's all boiled down. Ready to eat. And you mean that's all I got to do? I tell you what, that's a big hill to climb right there now. Put everything out of your mind but God. Give all your strength to Him. And it says, this right here, this is a, with all thy heart, you mean everything I have given unto Him. It's like Jesus told that man, that rich man, go on, sell everything you got, and then come back. Sell everything you got and come back. Give everything to God and then come back. And we say, well, all that was uh, symbolic. I, I beg to differ. I, I, I know a lot of this is symbolic, but some of it is not. Some of it is not. I beg to differ. Because when God tells you to sell it, you sell it. When God tells you to keep it, you keep it. When God tells you anything, you do it. Then you are giving your whole heart to God. As the Bible says, a rich man can't, can't, enter, can't, get, can't get close to heaven. Because his mind's on other things. And I think sometimes, well, maybe that's the reason I've never been a rich man. A rich man because I... I might go into good. I might not be able to do what God's telling me to do because I have all that money. But I want to tell you what. If we stay in the Spirit, if we stay not giving to make myself look good and not doing things to make myself look good, but doing everything that God tells you to do to make Him look good,
You won't be rich with physical things, mentally things. You'll only be rich with spiritual things. Honor and glorify Him. God wants you to live in a mansion. God wants you to have a new car. God wants you to have all of the above. God wants you to have all the money on this earth if he, he does, so desires to give it to you. He wants you to have everything in this life that is good to prosper. But all the things we have, all the things that He gives us, we have to give it to Him in order to prosper. We can't hoard it. I mean... We need to get have a closer relationship with God is what I'm saying here this morning. And I don't want to toot my own horn this morning, but I want to tell you what. I know when He speaks. And I understand His voice. It took me many, many years to figure that one out. But once I did, I don't sit around thinking about what I wish I'd have done it when I was 21. No, I'm thanking God that I'm being able to live this long and do it now. So what I'm saying here this morning, when you ride down the road and you see a beggar on the side of the street and God says stop, give him something. And God says no, don't stop, keep on going. Listen to me. God says open this book, open it up. God says close the book, close the book. God says help. God says, don't help. Well, I don't believe no worry in this book. God said, don't help. Answer that one for me, preacher. God told Lot, leave. Solomon and Gomorrah. Don't stay there and help. Leave. So he left. And he even told the lady, don't turn around and look back. Leave. Don't look back. Don't stay there and try to help them people. Or you're going to be them people. Or you're going to go through what them people are going through. Or about to go through. Whatever. See, this Bible, if we think about it real hard, Do what God is saying to do this morning. If he's saying leave, like he told his disciples, dust the, 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 the dirt off your feet and leave. Don't stay around there, Charlie. Don't stay around there. Oh, y'all got to come back to God. Here's your $10. Here's your $20. Oh, y'all just come to God. When he says leave, leave. When he says pay it to sign it, pay. When he says don't pay it to sign it, don't pay. When you sit down with your family, God says pay for the meal, pay for it. And don't tell me and rear back on your thumb and say God has never talked to me. Have you ever had a thought? Has anything ever went through your mind? I'm asking this morning. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm try trying to be hateful. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I'm just asking a question this morning. And I wish I could tone my voice down. When I get to speaking after God, I can't, I can't do it. But have you ever had a thought? A good thought or a bad thought? The good thought is coming from Him. The bad thought is coming from the devil. There's only two sources. Good and the bad. Bad thought, good thought. Well, let's try to figure that one out. My little grandbaby there counts two. And I ain't had much education, but I count two. That's all we need to worry about, right? Two thoughts. Bad thought, good thought. God talking, devil talking. That's all he says. And when you give all your heart to God, when you, we give all our heart to God, when we focus only on God, my God. I ain't heard the devil in a long time. Where's he at? Oh, that's right. I've been thinking about God.
Why did the devil even come out of my mouth when I'm thinking about God? And all of it goes right back to square one, which is my fault. It's either let the devil in or let God in to your mind. Because you know, <laughs> it's sad to say, but both of them are all around all the time. One's ready to devour. One's ready to overtake you and give you what you need. Thank y'all for coming. And the glory stay in the Lord. And I pray. No, I know. I know it without a shadow of doubt, and I believe it. Well, that's one thing I, I forgot to tell you this morning. It goes back to square one again. All you have to do is believe and follow Him. And if you're not doing that, I pray that you can have a closer relationship with Him. Do what the Bible says. Love thy God with all thy heart, mind, body, and soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. In Jesus Christ I pray, amen.